Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. As always, I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate all of you. I'm sure by the title, you can tell what this video is about. Today, I wanna show you my top five foundations of all times, at least to this point. We're like end of July, 2020. I have tried a lot of foundations in the past, and these are my top like i will always repurchase them i love them and i love them for different reasons i do want to let you guys know i have not tried all foundations i'm sure you guys have a holy grail foundation and if you do let me know in the comments i would love to try it if i have not already tried it but these five that i'm going to show you are it for me they give me that perfect finish that i absolutely love i have like what do I have three drugstore foundations and then I have two high end. I also have an honorable mention that I am going to include in this only because it's been one of my holy grails for a long time, but I don't know if it's top five anymore, but I still love it. Anyways, guys, please do subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And also, if you could drop me like a suggestion for a future video in the description box, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I feel like sometimes I run out of ideas. So any suggestions of what you guys would like to see, I would absolutely love. My nails, guys, are disgusting. I am gonna try to redo them today or tomorrow. I've kind of been like peeling off the gel. So you're gonna see some pretty disgusting nails today. And I do apologize for that. Oh, and one more thing, my shirt. I've been having a huge tie-dye moment lately. Like I've been obsessed with tie-dye. So this is the brand Pause. So if you are an animal lover, definitely check them out. Uh, go to their website. I'm not gonna lie, they are kind of pricey. They're like $28.99, which to me that is really pricey. They do have a sales section on their website and like 10% goes to, I don't know if it's animal shelters or what, but 10%, they like donate 10% to something. Um, I'll probably list in the description box i don't exactly remember but i do know that they help out a cause i just don't 100 remember what it was but i love this tie-dye moment this is a large i didn't know that they were unisex and i think they're unisex i wish i would have bought a medium because it's super super large on me but it's okay i like that large type moment or whatever like the bagginess so i do like it but i'm like super obsessed with tie-dye lately so i do love my shirt guys so definitely check out pause and let's just go ahead and get started okay so my first foundation that I want to start with is the one that I'm actually wearing today and this is like my newest find my newest obsession and that is the L'Oreal Fresh Wear foundation it's the infallible fresh wear I wear the shade 455 I don't know what to say about this foundation other than I love it so so much and because it's drugstore it makes me love it so much more it gives you just the perfect like I have it right now and I'm looking in the mirror and I'm just like it's the perfect base canvas for the rest of your makeup now you could wear this on casual days and you can wear this when you have like lashes and eyeshadow on now, now, most of my foundations, what I look for is longevity, how long it'll last me throughout the day. And I look for the type of wear. I would consider myself combo normal skin, but because I am a flight attendant and I do fly, we tend to get really, really dry in flight. So I gravitate more towards dewy, luminous, breathable type foundations. I don't necessarily like matte. I can do like a demi matte sometimes, but I like more of like a natural finish. So I feel like a lot of my foundations are more like natural finish foundations. Also, if I'm gonna be doing foundation, I like a full coverage foundation. I mean, I have tinted moisturizers and I have BB creams, but they never make my top five. I always have high hopes when I buy them, but then I end up not liking them because they're just not my thing. Like they're, yeah, they're cute, they're whatever, but like I'm like go big or go home. I cannot just wear like a BB cream or tinted moisturizer because I hate the way my face looks. I'd rather just not wear any makeup at all because then it looks like half done, half not. I don't know. Some women pull it off really, really well. I personally cannot. I either wear full coverage or wear nothing. So most of my foundations will fall into that like natural finish, demi matte, luminous ish 
type wear. Again, I'm normal combo, so that's what I look for. But I'm not gonna lie, a lot of these uh, foundations will actually work even if you are oily skinned. The only reason I say that because a lot of times, if you do believe in primer, just prep your skin correctly and it'll work. I'm not one that I like absolutely love primers, but if you are someone that does, just prep your skin accordingly with your favorite mattifying primer if you are oily and you could make these foundations work. Also prep your skin with like your moisturizers, your serums, your eye creams, and then it comes out so much better because you don't look crusty. So that is just my tip. I feel like any face can make a dewy foundation work and any face can make a matte foundation work. It's all on how you prep your skin. So always do your skincare and then always prep with either a dewy primer or a mattifying primer for your base. I mean, your whole face is your foundation. Like your foundation takes up your whole face. So give it all you can give it to make it look bomb. So yeah, guys, this one is seriously like, I love this one so much. And I've tried all their foundations that L'Oreal has, like the True Match, the Pro Glow, the Pro Matte. This one is my favorite. The Fresh Wear, I absolutely love this one and I will repurchase it so much. I heard about this from I think Kathleen Lights uh, here on YouTube and she raves about it and loves it and I don't know what it is about it but it just it blends well and you just look airbrushed and I'm probably gonna say that with all these foundations because that's exactly how I feel is airbrushed. Now my second foundation is this Maybelline Dream Urban Cover. I really 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 like this. This one actually has SPF 50. Now I do like SPF in my foundations but it's not like a dire need. The only reason I say that is because SPF tends to have flashback and if I'm wearing a full coverage foundation most likely I'm gonna be taking pictures and I don't want that heavy flashback. So the reason I love this so much is because this is for my summer days. Because I live in California and it's 100 degrees every single day of summer, I feel like I always want extra, extra coverage. Now, I always wear SPF, but to be able to put a foundation that's SPF 50 on top of your actual SPF, to me, I just feel so much better. I am one that like, I want to stay looking young for as long as I can. I'm already 31 years old. I always get told that I don't look 31, but then I always always get told that I look way older than my sister. My sister's 32. So I don't know, but I just think this, this is just such a good foundation. And I always hear that this is a dupe for like the Bye Bye foundation or the Bye Bye CC cream. But I'm being honest, I don't really like this thing. I feel like I was suckered into buying it by a rep at the Ulta Beauty store. So I was like, whatever. But honestly, I, I don't really like it that much. It's not like my, my thing. Like it's, it's okay. Like a lot of foundations to me are okay. But to make like my top five or like my holy grail is you got to really like step up your game with me and really impress me. I don't know. I, I love this shade. This is a shade 128 warm nude. I just love this foundation. It's actually like almost out. So I'm gonna have to get a new one. Again, it is drugstore. It's full coverage. It has SPF and it like blends out like a dream. Oh, before I move on guys, I use a beauty sponge for everything. I try and try and try to use a brush, but brushes just never work for me. They always leave like streaks. So if I were to use a brush, guys, this is the type of brush that I would use. It's like the Real Techniques. This is called the Expert Face Brush. I love like the stippling, the short stippling brushes. And pretty much this is what I would use if I was going to be using this uh, for foundation. I always feel like even if I use a brush at the end, I still will have to pat with the sponge. I don't know what it is with my face, but if I use a brush, it's always super, super streaky. So I just, I have to use a sponge. This is the e.l.f. Total Face Sponge. I do love the original Beauty Blender a lot. I love the L'Oreal sponge a lot. I think that one's pink as well. And I also love the Equal Tools one. So please don't feel like you have to spend the $20 or $21 on the Beauty Blender. You can get a lot of really good sponges for like $10 or less that will work just as good as the Beauty Blender, if not better. Some people love them even more. So all my foundations are always applied with a sponge. Now I always hear that sponges tend to like soak up a lot of product, which maybe they do, but to be honest to me, it gives the perfect finish and it makes your face, which is your canvas, look awesome. Okay, so now my third foundation is probably the oldest drugstore foundation that I've had and I absolutely love this foundation. I mean, it's not the oldest, but I've had it for a while and that is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I use the shade Golden Beige. I just love this foundation. It literally just lays down the perfect 
canvas. All these foundations are buildable. It just looks really, really good. It lasts all day. It's full coverage and it's like five freaking dollars. Like you don't get any better than that. This is probably like my fifth bottle already. I would buy this baby all the time just because I've known about it for so long and it was really the only like drugstore one that I constantly like repurchased. Like I've bought a lot of like the Maybelline and L'Oreal ones, but I've never really like repurchased them. Like they're good, but they're not like, oh my God, like amazing. And I have to have to have it. This one is like, I have to have to have it. Like I just, I don't know. I just love this foundation. It's very full coverage. It's very like, it's not patchy. It like blends well. It looks super natural. It doesn't cling to like dry patches. One of my big things in foundations that I know if I like it or not is if it sinks into my smile lines and none of these foundations sink into my smile lines. That to me is a huge win. I always like will set heavily with powder right here. I don't know if that makes a difference or if it's actually the foundation, but I feel like I have a lot of like deep smile lines right here. So I'm constantly smiling, especially being a braces wearer. They're very bulky. So you feel like you're like your mouth is open a lot. So I definitely look for something that doesn't leave those heavy, like thick smile lines. I, 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 uh, I hate that. Anyways, but these three are like, if you want an affordable drugstore foundation, Please guys take a look at these three. They are so awesome. They're all full coverage. They're all buildable, medium to full coverage foundation and you definitely will not be disappointed. The only one that doesn't have SPF would be the Wet n Wild one, but the L'Oreal has SPF 25 and the Maybelline has SPF 50. Okay, so now I'm gonna move into my high-end foundations and you guys are probably gonna know, but my number one foundation of all time that is so good guys and i feel like it's so underrated is the smashbox studio skin 24 hour wear now okay this used to be called the 15 hour wear hydrating foundation and when i went to go purchase another one i was like did they change the formula or did they discontinue the other one however they did not um the reason it's called 24 hour foundation now is because i guess it was proven that it lasts way longer than 15 hours so they just decided to change change the name from 15 hour to 24 hour. Now it's actually the exact same foundation and I did test it out because before I was done with my previous bottle, I did half of my face with the 15 hour wear, half of my face with this one, the 24 hour wear, and it was the same shade. It lasted the same like longevity. So I know that it actually is the same foundation. And you can even see on like the Ulta website or the Sephora website, they still market it as sometimes the 15 hour hydrating, but this is what you're gonna be getting. And then you're gonna be like, wait, is that actually what I purchased? And yes, it is. But guys, if you wanna try a bomb ass foundation, please give this a try. It's like a natural finish. It's full coverage. It lasts a really long time. I mean, you're definitely not going to be wearing your foundation for 24 hours. At least I don't think you, you may be, or you may be one of those people that don't take off your foundation at nighttime. Gross. You should always take off your foundation at nighttime. But I mean, at least it claims to be long wearing. To me, when I hear 24 hours, it's like, okay, it's just a long wearing claim because no one really wears their foundation that long. However, because a lot of the times um, I do my makeup here in my home, and then I drive three hours to my base for work, and then I still can fly up to 10 hours. I need a very, very long wearing foundation. So when I do work, sometimes I have my foundation on for 15 plus hours. So I do like a long wearing foundation. And a lot of times I don't even like retouch up. Maybe I might throw on some more powder, but for the most part, I don't like reapply or anything. Like I just put on like a translucent powder and that's really it. Yeah, guys, this one is, literally worth your money. It's like 36 bucks or something, but it's definitely worth your money and please give it a try. I feel like it's so, so underrated. A lot of people do not talk about it, but it is the best foundation I've ever tried. It gives me the most like flawless, flawless looking skin. Like I have no imperfections when I wear it. Everything is covered up. I don't have texture. I don't have pores. I don't have bad creases. It's just, this is the one you need to try. If you're gonna try them, try this foundation. Okay, so now my fifth foundation is actually the Too Faced Born This Way. It has quickly become one of my favorites. It took me forever to get this because I never jumped on the bandwagon. A lot of people would rave about it all the time and I was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. But in all seriousness, I have a lot of foundations so I never really wanted to repurchase any more just because I had so much and I still have a lot right here that I have to finish. But I couldn't help but want to try this out. I was like, 
Everyone raves about it. And to me, if someone raves about something, it's for a reason. And it lives up to all the claims of how awesome it is. I promise you guys, it claims to be a medium to full coverage, which I think it's very, very true. And I think on the website, it's a natural finish foundation. Again, that's what I like about it. Now, the only thing I would say is this did not hold up well under a mask. That's the only thing I can think of. And I set with Urban Decay All Nighter. I do all that stuff. But when you're under a mask in super high temperature, it is really, really hot. And I was sweating so much. It came off with all my sweat under the mask, which I'm being honest, I don't feel like I'm being fair to it if I judge it like that because I'm sure all these foundations, if not more, would probably do the same. It's just I heavily noticed it because that was the day I did wear a foundation and put on a mask. Usually when I wear my mask, I don't really wear foundation. I just go bare faced and like do my brows and some concealer. But that was the only thing I noticed. Again, this is just a really like flawless foundation it doesn't cling to any dry areas even if you're oily in the middle and dry over here it just it's a smooth canvas throughout your whole face so i definitely love the Too Faced born this way as well and then i get the shade warm nude i've told you guys before i look medium skin but i'm very yellow where sometimes i feel like i look kind of jaundiced a little bit I'm very yellow and I'm actually fairly light because I try to match my neck. Every time that I would go to like counters and stuff, they always want to match me to a darker foundation. And then I take like a sample home and I try it on. And then I feel like my neck looks so white and that my face looks like orange or super, super dark. I don't know. I Again, I always try to match my neck and I'm very like yellow undertone or neutral. I'm not very warm. I'm either yellow or neutral. So I don't know what that means to you guys, but I had to put it in there. Okay, so I do have an honorable mention and that is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I'm not gonna talk a lot about this baby because this is like everyone's holy grail. Everyone knows about this. I do love it too. I use the shade 2W2 Rattan, Rattan, Rattan. I have had this one for so long. This is like my third bottle because I repurchase it all the time. It's super luxurious. It's super chic. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful foundation. The only reason that I did not mention it in my top five is because I feel like this is starting to look almost too matte on me where the last time I wore, or the last two times I wore it, I felt like my face was kind of like tight and I didn't like that feeling. So even though it still gives a really pretty full coverage finish and it looks beautiful, I did feel my skin a little like tight, like it couldn't breathe or like I couldn't move as freely because my skin felt tight. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the foundation. It could also be maybe I didn't prep my skin well enough that day. Like I should probably have used a like dewy or luminous primer or I should have probably moisturized better. So there's so many factors. So it definitely still is one of my favorites, but it doesn't make my top five anymore only because I may need a more hydrating foundation where this may be a little too matte for me but it's still a great foundation it doesn't have spf it's like if you want to be full coverage snatched for a wedding for a party anything you're going to be taking lots of photography this is your baby it's really really good please do give it a try and i do want to mention um max studio fix fluid i know a lot of people have you know mixed reviews when it comes to matte because it's not cruelty free and i know it breaks a lot of people out like it has harsh chemicals or all the above but i do love that i don't currently have it um because i use it all that is a really good foundation i love the way it looks on me so that one again i love 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 max studio fix foundation and I think I am the shade NC 25 or NC 30 in that one but I don't know because I haven't had it in a while but I think that's what I am in that foundation but yeah please give that one a try if you do love MAC it's like super artistry makeup and that one is like really really good as well all right guys so that does end this video thank you so much for watching I really hoped that you enjoyed my top five foundations I did get a recommendation for for this video for my cousin Priscilla. She always kept telling me to do a video about my foundations and I kept thinking, I don't know, I don't know. But honestly, I'm kind of running out of ideas at this point that I was like, sure, let's go ahead and film it. So again, guys, please drop comments below of what you would like to see. 
I am going back to work in September guys. I did not apply for any more like leaves of absences. So I will be going back to work September 1st and you will be seeing a lot more flight attendant content from me. So in the meantime guys, thanks again for watching my content that I do put out. I greatly, greatly appreciate every single one of you and all the views you give me, all the likes you give me and everyone who subscribes. And that's all I have to say. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.